Today we are going to be talking about these two lanterns right here. Over 120 years ago, W.C. Coleman invented the first portable gas-powered lantern. Today, Coleman is one of the biggest brands in camping. I was in a Target store the other day and I came across these two lanterns and the first thing I did was get on Amazon to buy them because they were cheaper. There will be a link below. <laughs> these are the Coleman Classic Red Lanterns. They look identical but they have one difference. They are both 400 lumens, but the one on the left is rechargeable and the one on the right uses D batteries. The one on the left is $36 and the one on the right is 20. So let's take these out of the box. We'll compare them a little bit and then we will come to a conclusion on which one is more worth the money. So as you can see here, not only are the lanterns identical, but if we turn the boxes around, you can see that the boxes are identical as well. The only thing different is a little bit of the writing on the boxes, being that one is rechargeable and one of them uses batteries. The way they're packed is even the same with the exception of the instruction booklets. This one is rechargeable and this one uses D batteries. And you can see that if we remove the boxes, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the two. Everything is the same from the printing on the bottom, the switches, the globes, and even the handles. In their physical presentation, the only thing that is different is seen if we turn them around, and you can see right here where there is a charging port. This is a micro SD slot and a regular USB port. If we turn them on their sides, you can see where the bottom is pretty much the same as well. This one actually has slots in it. This one just looks like it has slots. If we take the bottom off of this one, it just unscrews, and you can see where it uses four D-size batteries. Take the bottom off of this one, it comes right off. There is a charger cord and a plug. USB plugs right into the back of this, just like you're gonna charge a cell phone, and the micro SD goes right in the back of the lantern. Honestly, with this lantern, I really do like this feature. You just close that back up, put your charger in the bottom, close it up, and that's it. Another feature I love about these lanterns that is on both is this right here. If you have a loop that's sewn into your tent, you can undo this part, stick it through there, and hook it right back. And it's like that on both of these lanterns. Now the instructions for the rechargeable lanterns say, take the USB cord and the adapter out of the bottom of the lantern, plug the USB cord into the adapter, the other end into the lantern, plug the adapter into the wall. Now when I first received this, I turned the knob and it was already working. It was a super bright light, so I thought this will be charged in no time. The instructions say, charge time will take approximately four to six hours to fully charge. I plugged it in right back here and let me tell you, it took every minute of six hours to charge. It has a red light on the back when you first plug it in and it turns green to let you know that it is fully charged. Six hours. <laughs> Now, while we're talking about the back, let's talk about the USB port. That port can be used to charge your cell phones or other small things like maybe an iPad. I tested this out and while the lantern itself was plugged into the wall charging, the USB charger would not work at all. I plugged it into two of my phones and neither one would even acknowledge that it was plugged in. Now, when I unplugged the lantern from the wall and plugged the USB cord back in and back into my phones, both of them showed that they were charging. So when you charge another small appliance off of this lantern, you're actually taking from the charge that you used six hours to get in the lantern itself, which seems a little crazy to me. When I received this lantern, I turned the knob and it did not turn on because it didn't have any batteries. You know how long it took me to charge this one? What was that, about 10 seconds? So I think we're kind of already getting an idea of which one of these is better. $36, $20, six hours to charge, 
10 seconds to put in batteries. Now let's bring the boxes back over here a minute and take a look at them. And then we're gonna take these outside and I'm gonna show you how bright both of them are. We'll do a little bit of a comparison, see if one is brighter than the other. But for now, let's look at the box for the rechargeable lantern. 400 lumens, four hours on high, or 15 hours on low. The other lantern, which uses 4D batteries, 400 lumens, 30 hours on high, 70 hours on low. Now, depending on what you're gonna use these for, maybe the difference in those numbers doesn't matter that much to you, but chances are if you're buying a Coleman lantern, you're gonna be using it for camping. And personally, if I'm camping, four hours, even 15 hours, is nowhere near long enough for a lantern. And remember, you're camping, so unless you have a solar charger or a generator, you're not gonna be recharging this thing in a tent. This one, on the other hand, 30 hours on high, 70 hours on low. That sounds a lot better to me. Even if you have a charger with you, this one dies while you're camping, four to six hours to recharge. This one dies while you're camping, 10 seconds to put in new batteries. If I wake up in the middle of the night, have to go to the bathroom and find that my lantern is dead, I would much rather take 10 seconds to put new batteries in that one than even 20, 30 minutes or an hour to have to charge this one. Now I will say in defense of the rechargeable, lantern. You pay $36 one time and that's it. You just recharge it if you need your light. However, with consideration in the time it takes to recharge that light, even though you have to continually buy batteries for this one, I think that heavily outweighs the benefit of paying for this lantern one time and never putting another dime into it. I mean, again, your power goes out at home because of a storm, what do you want to do? Go, hey, where's my lantern? And find out that it's dead and not be able to charge it or say, oh, let's put some batteries in the other lantern and there you go. Now, before we take these outside and try them out, I do want to say that I was watching some other videos online to see if anybody else had done a comparison between these two. I did not see one. However, in the comments of a lot of them, people were asking how to change the light bulb in these. So I thought, well, I'm going to find out and give that answer. And I'll tell you what, I can't figure it out. This comes off. It just unscrews on both of these. But this part does not unscrew, and I can't find any other way to gain access to that. I don't see anything in the instructions regarding changing the light bulb either, so I hate to say it, but I kind of think that if the light bulb goes out, you're out of luck. If you have one of these and you've figured it out, please let us know in the comments below. Now, one more thing I want to point out about these is that both boxes say they are water resistant. However, the instructions say when you're cleaning them, avoid excessive water. Now, using common sense, that probably just means do not immerse it in water. Don't be pouring water over top of it. But that to me also kind of says if it's raining, you better get it covered up. Okay, we're gonna take these outside and try them out in the dark. I do wanna point out here, this says 12 meters on high, six meters on low, that is the rechargeable. And this one says 12 meters on high and seven meters on low, and that is the regular one. So we are out on my deck right now. Obviously, I have the light on my camera on. I'm gonna turn that out in a second, but we have the rechargeable lantern on the left and the battery lantern on the right. This is how dark it is out here right now without the light on. And this is both of the lanterns turned on to low. They pretty much look the same. And then we'll come down here and turn them both on to high. That is super bright. And again, they pretty much look like they're both putting off the same amount of light. So they both are awesome looking. They both put off a ton of light. If you were out in the wilderness camping or if you were in your house and had a storm and the lights went out, either one of these would do the trick. But as far as which one is more worth the money, we just have to look at those other factors. And for me, I'm gonna have to go with the battery operated lantern. Less cost, more running time, and less time in between when your light goes off. And the batteries, you don't have to buy $15 Duracells. You can go to the Dollar Tree and get D batteries for a buck 25.